there everyone, welcome to another historical walk and explore. I'm just about in Cheshire, I've just come over the border. I'm basically where Derbyshire, Cheshire and Staffordshire meet. And I'm here to look at something called Folly Mill. Now down in the valley there, I should be able to find my mate Steve Picker as well, let's explore. He's up with his mates Andy, Steve and Dave, who I'm yet to meet but have heard an awful lot about. Now the reason this was called Folly Mill is because it was built in a place that was hella inaccessible and it was built by a guy called Abraham Day. Now his story is quite a quirky one. As you can see, we're kind of in the middle of nowhere. I mean, it's a beautiful location. But down there, in those trees, there was a paper mill. So this mill was built in 1790, and there are plenty of remains of it. Let's explore, Steve. He sent me, uh, he sent me some photos and said, Do you fancy coming down? I was like, mate, I am on it. Famous blue coat. Hello. How you doing, mate? Yes. Yeah, so what's amazing here, Gaz? This is the old um, pack horse route. But if you bring the camera down here, right? Oh wow, mate! Look at that. Yeah, well, this is how treacherous this place was. To get stuff to and from it was ridiculous. The mill's down there. Jeez. One turn and you're gone. So what you got to try and remember here? Try and imagine the winter we've just had with all the rain we've had. So imagine somewhere like this with a lot of rain, waterfall off and run off. Yeah. You know, like biblical style rain. Just imagine that. Now look at this old pack horse route. So just down there, it turned on itself and carried on down here. Can you see that look, the old road? That's a proper hairpin turn at the end, isn't it? Yeah, it, it is. It's, it goes wide there. You'll have to show everyone that. But just here, look, the road at some point stops. That's because it fell away, so... Oh, right, the river's taking it back. Yeah. So, uh, it was a, a treacherous place. No one really knows why Abraham Day built his mill there. But I'm glad he did, because we get to go and have a nose there. That's one sheer drop. This mill was opened in 1790, but the one we're coming to look at is actually the third one. Abraham Day built the first one, got washed away, so he replaced it with another one got washed away and then he built a third one but there's quite a funny story related to him building that third mill see this feels like a um, like a path as well doesn't it yeah well there was I'm not certain if there was some sort of cottage down here right or some sort of outbuilding concerning the milk because you can see now mate there's the milk there we go so there's Indiana Jones and Dave down there oh, I'm looking forward to meeting them that there look See, that's known as Gibbon's Cliff because it does look a, like a side view face of a monkey. Ah, oh, so it does. Do, do, can you see it? Yeah, yeah. But as you are just saying, this looks like a road. We've got a structure there, look. So I'm wondering when that one back there then, when that fell in, whether it fell in, you know, a couple hundred years ago or whether that's a recent collapse. Possibly, but... Ah. Uh, yeah. Not good. No. Unfortunately, standing in manure is sort of par for the course, isn't it? There's a lot of it about. So there, we're gonna get down and have a look at that. But that, look at it, and it's a load bigger there, went round there as well. This is the third mill that was built around about 1790. From what I've read up, there's not loads and loads of information online about it, but it's just, I mean, look at it. It's like a scene from like Lord of the Rings or something. It's yeah, it's a beautiful location. I've already got Gollum down there, delighted yeah. Dave. So. <laughs> it is a bit like Rivendale. But that's it, that's, that's what I was looking for. So these are steps here, believe it or not, but they're not walked very often. No, no they're so. not. <laughs> but yeah, look at that. There's a house there, or was a house, or, or some kind of structure there as well, look. And there's the, there's the monkey's head. Whoa! Yeah. <laughs> was you filming? I was. <laughs> I got a stack it at least once, it's rule. Yeah, yeah. So, 
Abraham Day's wife, what was her name? Do we know her name? Um, Medjuli. I think it was Wens. Wens? Yeah. Oh, Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> so his wife Wens, right, she wasn't very impressed with, um, with the fact that he was going to build a third mill. Because obviously he built one, it got washed away by the river. He built another one, it got washed away by the river. And he said, here love, I'm going to build a third one. And she said, so the legend goes, if you build a third mill, I'm going to bed and I ain't getting out of bed. And they say, that's exactly what happened. And so she went to bed, she didn't get out of bed for a considerable amount of time and in the end actually died in bed. I don't know how long she went to bed for. Um, but but that's, the, uh, that's the legend story anyway. So we've got Andy and Steve. Hey up. Hey up. How hey you doing man. mate? That's Andy and Steve. So there's two Steves. And delighted Dave is off flying the drone somewhere so we're going to see him in a minute I think. Look at this. Okay, that's amazing. Right, I'm going to try and do this in some kind of order then. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk around, find Steve, and basically start this little explore of Folly Mill in Cheshire from where the river entered the mill. And that way, It'll be sort of coordinated in terms of an explore, he says. So this is known as Tor Brook. Beautiful, beautiful river. It joins up with the River Dane, which is just round the corner there. Kind of just forks off at that point. Now I'm not sure where the River Dane gets its name, whether it's anything to do with Dane land, obviously where the, uh, where the Vikings came over because we're just at the edge of the Peak District, which I thought was called the Peak District because there's loads of peaks, but it's not. It's actually because of the Peaker people. Um, but we're at the edge of that, so we may well be in Daneland, hence the River Dane. You may know better than me that. Cheers for inviting me out with you, mate. Anytime, buddy. Thanks for coming along. Nah, it's lovely here. Yeah. Always welcome. I'm gonna, I'm gonna start where the water comes into the mill and go from there, so let's have a look. The reason I think it's called Folly Mill is because basically we're in the middle of nowhere. And so this was a paper mill that was built in 1790 by Abraham Day. And as you can see from the drone footage, like it's completely inaccessible. So I don't know how they were getting stuff out and I don't know how they were getting stuff in. So here we go then, Steve. So this is where the water comes in. Yeah, so I'm not going to take all the credit for this because my good buddy Indy Andy Jones has just been telling me about it. But it makes a hell of a lot of sense. So basically, guys, what would have been here would have been a a weir wall built here spanning the river to build a head of water up because this here this is the main mill channel now it's been filled in a bit now oh but you can make it out there clear yeah, as day you yeah you can see it there but where it gets interesting there would have been a sluice gate there as well but where it gets interesting here the problem they would have had, they wouldn't have wanted too much water coming down here at times because of course when, when, when it was in flood due to a lot of rain, this would have needed its own overflow system and we've actually got that still here, in situ. So we can have a look at that because that's very interesting. In terms of information and stuff on places like this, as I've said it was built in 1790, but it went in the 1860s, so long, 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 long time ago. So just here somewhere roughly, we think, Andy was saying, there may well have been a sluice gate here. Okay. Now that'll all become very clear to you because We'll go back down here. There's an archway buried in these roots down here. Let's where... get down here then. Yeah, so. Down here. Oh, oh. Okay. That, that was it's luckily. It's stuck in it. Stuck in it, yeah. That twice already today. It's not a video if I don't stuck it, to be no. fair. Oh, here we go, yeah. Yeah, so that, we think that is the overflow just there. There, look. there, there, that's it. Sorry, I was a bit of an arch place. Yeah, there is an arch. There's another channel here with another little culvert, if you like. We all know I like a culvert. You do like a culvert. You do, you certainly do. Yeah. Amazing! Ow! So, <laughs> so we do. We think this is the overflow. Oh, okay. So that's not powering yeah. anything. So when there was too much water for the wheel to take, for the mill to function properly, because you, you wouldn't want too much water on the wheel, they could open a gate up here and have a like in the bath, innit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Too yeah. much water, you got that little hole in the top of it. Steve loves a bath. Oh yeah, I do. Well, less said about that, the better. But yeah. So this is your overflow here. I see. Do you reckon that's an original hubcap as well from the 1790s? Yeah, I think it was from uh, Abraham Day's Austin Metro. Yeah, he strikes me as someone that would drive an Austin Metro. Yeah, definitely. 
bit sketchy this place because there was three mills here, you kind of got three places tied into one. It's like just round here, these two walls here that look like columns that look like they're going to fall down. Like they look like there. they could go at any minute, don't they? Yeah, I mean, you've got some stonework in between them, and there we think that stonework in between them is older than those two. But it's, it's an amazing place. I'm in love with it, to be honest with you. It's incredible. So I heard, obviously you and Andy were talking when I wasn't filming and you, he, he was saying to you, wasn't he, about the fact that this is older, this bit. He thinks this bit's older as well. Yeah, so... Because I guess when the, when the mills wash away, they don't wash the entirety of it away, do they? No, so what Andy was saying was, this part of it, this stone looks near enough identical to the sort of stone that's up there on the cliff. Oh yeah. And this stone here looks more like stuff that you'd find that's mined around and quarried around Matlock Bath, around that area. So that's why we're bringing him for, because he knows everything, but yeah. we don't tell him. There he is up there in the distance. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna clamber now. I'm, I'm gonna film myself just in case I stack it, because I normally do. And we're gonna have a look at the wheel pit of what we probably think is the third inclination, because it looks newer. I mean, it closed in 1860, so it's not spanking new, but it looks newer than that. So water flows through here then through that arch, over the top, and you, oh, you can make out exactly where the wheel would have gone. Overshot wheel. You can make it out. So it would have sat in there. Wow. It's a big old building, isn't it? Given like how remote we are. Yeah. I, I mean, I get having a paper mill in the woods. That makes sense to me, because the trees, you need the trees for the paper, I get that. But getting stuff in and out. What's a nightmare? This is the thing that a lot of people, including myself, I mean, I've just gone walking up the, the Clough Brook there, and like, it's, it's kind of inaccessible, and I'm trying to think like an engineer. You know, can you imagine someone like James Brindley down here, kind of scratching his head? Right, where are we going to stick it then? Better off on the main River Dane, why put it here? Yeah, you know, that's the thing, put it, isn't it? Put, it, put it closer to Winkle, downstream, do you know yeah. what I'm saying? You know, but they build it here three times, so. There's stuff going on here as well, isn't there? Platforms. Yeah, to get it out. Yeah. Let me clamber down here then. Because uh, how thick the walls are though, guys. I know, yeah. You know, like when you look at buildings now that are constructed this day and age, I mean, these here, I mean, that's the best part of two foot thick. You know, I mean, they, they really did build things to last. That's why the walls are still standing. Yeah. You know, somewhere yeah. like my house in. Well, it might not last another five years. <laughs> I mean, but... No, I look, I look at new builds and they are like, yeah, Lego houses. So there's that arch again. So the water flows over here. Now, what do you reckon that is that down there? Where that water, would that be an overflow as well, do you think, Steve? Possibly, I really don't know if I'm honest with you. Because I feel like that is filled in a lot. Like I think stuff's fallen in there. Yeah. Because the, the, with the shape of that wall, the wheel would have been quite a, quite a long way down I under, mean, under there. I mean, if you look, if you look at the main wall, you can actually see. Oh, let me clamber out. I'm sorry if I keep getting the sun in your eyes, guys. It's it's a beautiful day, but it's not ideal for filming well, always. You can, you can actually see here where there were probably floors in here as well. Yeah. I mean, there's a doorway up there. There's probably steps here as well. Yeah, point. that looks like steps. Yeah. yeah. Possibly. Then again. There's a, there's a square hole in the, in the stonework there, almost like a, a, a floor joist for the joined in. So I'm not, I'm not too sure, but that's definitely a doorway up there. And there were victims of wind attacks as well, by the looks of it. Oh yeah. But no, unless that's another door that's just been blocked up. Uh, for people around the world, um, what Steve said there, window tax, you might, if I don't fall over, you might um, notice some old buildings in the UK have that. They have, they have filled in uh, windows. That was because they taxed people on how many windows they had. Because basically, the more windows you had, surely the more rich you were. So instead of paying tax on the windows, people just bricked them up. And that looks like a fireplace, it does, yeah. And it makes sense with where the, the joists would be for the floor, doesn't it? Yeah. I mean, it's a big building. I mean, how many floors? Well, that's at least three floors. At least, isn't it? At least, yeah. And then, you know, up there. I mean, that's Dave stomping off up there. Um, right, let's follow this round then. Mate, you, you've still got the um, the hinges on here as well, Steve. On the window. Okay. Well, so. we actually we actually think, well, Andy thinks, we might be right. Because obviously this has undergone a lot of changes, this place. Yeah, yeah. But we think there might have been a wheel pit 
just through there at one stage as well. So this there could well have been a water channel through here. It's it's hard to it's obviously undergone change and they've used it for something else because I mean if you look at this lot, it's almost like they had iron bars here as well. You've got holes in holes Oh yeah yeah. Well oh, you can see a bit hanging there. See that lot? Look at the top of that arch on the inside. Oh yeah yeah. It's almost like like a great big prison cell looking arch if you like. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Um, and then there's a bit sticking up up yeah. the top. So Fascinating. Yeah, so a grill of some kind then. But that could still have water flowing through it, couldn't it? Yeah. Through, through, through the grill. And then there are a couple of structures in line with that, to be fair. So we'll go and have a look at them in a second. Um, now, this looks like a door as well, here. Yeah, so that's your way in. And look at that. I mean, it's hanging on for dear life, these, these two pillar bits here. See where the floor joists used to go on one of the floors there as well, so yeah. like they would have gone all the way along at some stage, I imagine. Yeah. Now as I'm filming, you might notice, obviously I'm, I'm looking around a fair bit, normally so I don't get tangled up in stingers like I just have, but another reason is apparently, the ghost of Abraham Day still walks around this area. Lots of people have reported seeing him, so I'm kind of, you know, looking about seeing if I can see the guy. Here we go. So you were saying you think this bit's older then? This bit, because it, it, yeah, it does look different, yeah, doesn't it, so to I that? Yeah, I telling you earlier when I was filming. So yeah, these two, cool. what these, what looks like columns here, these look newer than what this does. Yeah. And it almost, when you look at it in places, it wouldn't have tied in with these two columns either, by the looks of it. So, so it's almost like they built the third mill kind of on top of the second and first one as well, just incorporated I mean, some of I it mean, maybe. I mean, to me, I mean, I'm not a stonemason or bricklayer by trade, but you know, when I look at this brickwork here, to me, it almost looks like this never tied into that, because that looks like it's been built and that's it, as finished there. I mean, yeah. I might be totally wrong. It's almost like these, maybe there was a, a bit of an arch here once as well, for whatever reason. We'll theorizing earlier that there used to be like a wooden bridge or something possibly that went from here across to there. The topography's changed a lot around here now. Might be totally wrong. Yeah, there, yeah. Was, there was some stonework there then. Yeah, it does look like old stonework there, don't it? So we're not certain. That's almost like an old road that's fell, like an old path. It's so inaccessible in places. It's bizarre, isn't it? It really is. It's like it's just been chucked up in open depths. It's mad, right. I'm gonna follow it round. Um, it's just like Steve's saying, like trying to work out why they built it here, how they got stuff out in terms of paper, because it's a paper mill. But the other thing as well is how did they get all the stonework down here to build it? So that's where me and Steve were a second ago, where, where there were bars on that. So it looks like water definitely flowed. I mean, there's a gully, 100%. There's some kind of stonework there. And it comes through here. Now this is an interesting one given this closed down in 1860, or the 1860s. Because if you get in here, now let me grab my torch, because I'm going to need it for this. There's something going off in here. Look at that. Now, there's a wooden ladder, and there's a pressure gauge. I mean, obviously this has nothing to do with the 1860s, but the stonework is old, so there was definitely something in here originally. But what that's doing there, and when that was put there, um, is anyone's guess, uh, you know, answers on a postcard job. Amazing. And there's the brook again. Now Steve's just walking up there. That was the path, I think, of the original road out of here, original road into here, but it's collapsed. So I've had to come over the top there to get in. Um, but there, you can see that's a, that's a pathway as well. Look, that's a, a, a ramp. And then it looks like you've almost got a loading platform, but to load what and to take it where, you know? I mean, it's incredible. Um, incredible place. Look at that. And there's that bit at the top. You can see it leaning over. That's, um, yeah, unfortunately that's gonna go. But that's the beauty of coming to these places, you know? Is that obviously these things, they've been here for hundreds of years. But like everything, they, they have a finite life in the end that'll go, that'll topple and it'll be lost forever. So it's a, without, you know, sounding too dramatic, it's, it's a privilege to be able to see these places um, before they're lost, you know? 
So I've come up to the top. Again, look that. That's clinging on for dear life as well there. But it's a big, it's a big sight. It's a really big sight because it carries on like, you know, I've come up that, that incline there. And there's what, I mean, it looks like a loading platform, but like I say, to load what onto what? Because that is just a brook, you know, you, they weren't taking things off by, by river, you know, by barge or whatever, that wasn't happening here. Let's have a look. Let's have a look in this doorway then. And um, we'll look down onto what would have been the wheel. So there you go, water came through there. And that's where that, that wheel was that powered this paper mill. So I've just come round. There was a door there, look, as well. And they filled that one in. And if you look down there, you can just see the stonework down the bottom. That's where the water flowed in and into that wheel. So we're walking away now. And this just shows, doesn't it, just how inaccessible this was because we I mean it's beautiful and I love it and I'm, I'm really happy that Steve's invited me out with him to come up here but I don't know how they were getting materials in and out of here not not with ease okay so me and Steve have walked away now from it we've come over the top back on ourselves and then we're coming back down again there were two entrances into the into the mill obviously we went the top way with those steps but there was another way because this comes down here and that's there's Andy there and the lads down there so I don't know if there was a bridge at this point that went over maybe so we've come away as I was saying from from the mill and we followed that sort of zigzag road down so Steve was saying this was a pack horse route, this. Um, I mean, it's, it's hella steep and there's like hairpin turns and, and all sorts. Um, but we're gonna come down to the river and see if there's any evidence of a bridge over because do you remember where we looked at that kind of loading platform and that, and that incline? That is this side of the mill down towards the river. So I'm wondering. So if you can just see through there, I'd say excuse the sound of the river, but it's a beautiful sound. All that stonework there, that's that loading, that platform um, right next to the mill that we were trying to work out kind of what that was all about. Andy, do you reckon there was a bridge across here, mate? You can't work it out, it's like he's just said. It's a really wide wall down there. Right. You don't know, if you look at it, you can see how thick it is. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's not a bridge, it's just a wall. You can't work it out, it's like he's just said. It's a really wide wall down there. Right. You don't know, if you look at it, you can see how thick it is. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So someone's going off there as well. Oh, that's a dead, dead pigeon. Ah, uh, yes. yes. And back into the river. Yeah, yeah. So this would have been water down here then? Yeah, it would have been diverted. Yeah, it is. A sawmill makes total sense next to a paper mill, doesn't it? Exactly. Yeah. To be fair. And the reason it's so far away is the only ne next flat bit of ground. The, the only problem with that is, Gaz, they, the time period this was for actually making paper, they actually used to make it out of beat up rags, I think. Really? I think so, yeah. Um, and that's why it went out of use in the 1860s, because by that point they were mass producing paper and making it different, probably pulp in wood, I imagine. But yeah. I'm sure if you read up on it, they're actually mashing up rag. Got yeah, because I assumed that it was it was wood, and that's why it was built, you know, in a woods. But in wood or paper chipping, uh, wood chippings, doesn't it? And not only that as well, Dave. It's that inaccessible. It just it just thought, you know what? Yeah, but this isn't though. I can't is it? compete. No. This isn't. There'd be a lot less strain on the donkeys or horses or whatever they use, the mule, this way rather than yeah. the other way. Because we did speak earlier where them two columns are standing over there. The brickwork in between them's older. And yeah. me, and him, me and Andy were theorising about the possibility of, from that point, there was a, might have been a bridge over. Mm. So I really don't know, it's a, it's a conundrum, isn't it? This one is. Where's Carol Borderman? But this is definitely water. Yeah, you can yeah. see it down there, yeah. So there you go, there's the wall. And the lads are just saying this is too thick to be a boundary fence or, or anything like that. So, I mean, that is, that's like the side of a castle. And there's the river there. The mill is round the corner, and as you can see there, that's the path down. 
So they're theorizing maybe this was a sawmill and this was some water diverting down here that would have powered a wheel here maybe. So much going on, but it's really hard to, to work it out because, because it went so long ago. You know, it's not like old railways where you've got old railway maps and you can go, oh, that's where the line crossed the road or whatever. There's, there's nothing for this whatsoever. So that's us. Thanks so much for watching. Steve, mate, lads, thank you so Anytime. much for, for having me out on your explore. Anytime. It's been lovely. Weather's been great and the mill's awesome as well. And what I like about it is actually it, it raises as many questions as it answers, doesn't it, in terms of what went off there. Oh, yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah. Oh, beautiful part of the we world. We can't though. really work it out that well. I don't think well. we're any wiser now. No. No, but we've had a great day out. And, um, and so thank you for, for coming along with us, I guess. And as always, if I don't trip over, I'll see you next time.